Well, Lisa, thank you for sitting down with me for a conversation on courage for Raw Courage TV. No problem. You are just such a dynamo. And, you know, the first time I ever even heard about you, I picked up the collective magazine, your magazine, yeah. uh, in an airport. Yeah. And I'm reading through it, and it's just filled with one quote after another and one story after another that all just totally speak to me and what I'm about to, which is about be bold challenge what's possible, just get out of your comfort zone. Mm. So, I mean, your, your company, The Messenger Group, you've published over 400 books. You've published 14, written 14 books yourself. Yeah. And the collective is over in over 30 countries? Yeah, 33 countries 33. now. 33. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, I don't want other women to look at you and go, okay, I feel really intimidated. What, the reason I wanted to sit down with you is, to, is just to pick your brains and hear your story because... I know you and I actually have similar roots. We both grew up in the country, grew up riding horses. Yes. Then we went off and did a lot of adventure travel. I was in the Sahara Desert. You were riding camels. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> and backpacking in India and in Central America. Mm. And so I, I totally feel like I, I relate and probably cross paths in a former life or in some youth hostel or something. Yeah, probably. Um, but so I just want to start by asking, you know, you started out a country girl your trajectory was not to be this trailblazing entrepreneur. No. And here you are. Yes. <laughs> so as you look back at the gap between the two, you know, what do you see is the consistent themes that have allowed you to get to where you are? Um, I'm still stuck in my head, sorry, on a word that you said before, oh. which is like about intimidating other women or something. And, and it's a really important <laughs> thing because um, I'm not sure even that, if that's what you said, but definitely I'm just a, like a daggy country girl who loves being home in I'm my sorry, uggies. You're looking, and... <laughs> not daggy, you look really cool. So, and I'm feeling really but... old ladyish, so you're looking really funky chicken. So, well, my point around that is that um, I'm no one special at all, you know, and I started my first business 13 years ago and it just happens that, you know, finally I'm having some success and, you know, it's like a 13 year overnight success, that kind of yeah. old adage. Yeah. And so my whole message to everyone really is that anything's possible. You know, if I can do this, um, having not come from a magazine background whatsoever, none of my team until a few months ago had ever worked for a magazine and yet we're sitting in the top 10 consistently in Australia and there's over five and a half thousand titles in this country alone and now we're in 32 other countries yeah. so you know for me I go anything's possible yeah. you know when you've got a, a big dream and a very clear vision and you know good so intentions. So hang on just stop there. Yeah. A big dream. Yeah. A clear vision. Yes. I mean that's th th that's really compelling and I think that's like core in this mm. that you really you dared to dream big because yeah. sometimes we don't even dream big I yes. mean you had this did you have a vision of having a magazine in 33 countries plus and growing uh no I knew it would be big the thing with me is and maybe we'll get into this because it's all about raw and courage you know I went through kind of I've been through everything I gave up drinking nearly 10 years ago I went through you know, a divorce. I alienated my family for three years. Like I had a pretty shitty okay. time for a while. And we'll get, we'll get back yeah. to all the shitty and stuff. And so for me, this was about, you know, um, I have done a lot of personal development over the last 10 years and I got to a point where I didn't need to work on me so much anymore. It was time to give back, you know? And so I got, I really, um, I'm not religious, but I'm quite spiritual. So literally for about four years, I just kind of said to the universe, you know, what is my purpose? I am prepared to do whatever. And I mean, whatever. It was complete detachment from outcome and surrender. It was like, if you want me to clean toilets in India, I will do it. I got to that level of, I'm ready to just not give. Not about pride and ego. Yeah. And, and that's a massive, you know, that's a massive place to get to and that took me a lot of years and a lot of personal development and a lot of stripping back to get yeah. there and so that's when it just became so freaking clear and so then I thought I don't want to play small anymore like I have something to do now I'm I really believe I'm just a conduit for a much bigger message and so it's mm -hmm. kind of like I'm going to go as big as I can freaking go and yeah. I mean big this is just page one of a book if that's what we yeah. were talking about it's, yeah. it's got a long way to go yeah and you know I think what's really to me, the most profound lesson in all of that is starting with that sense of purpose, yes. that it's about what am I here, dear God, or yeah. universe, higher power, yeah. what am I here to do? Like, yeah. what is it I'm supposed to do? Clean toilets in India, you know, yeah. teach children, whatever it is. And yes. I think it takes 
from that place of it doesn't matter if I become famous or rich, yeah. but I want to do this because I feel really purposeful. And yeah. I was just talking to you before we sat down um, with the cameras saying I've had a bit of, bit of a bumpy road even just getting Raw Courage Ooh. TV off the ground Ooh. and I've had to go, am I supposed to be doing this because I'm not having an easy time getting this off the ground? And you yeah. know what I keep coming back to? Yes, I am. Mm. And you know what? It'll go how it goes. Yeah, but, totally. But I just have to do this. That's so. it. I think it's about knowing your why. You know, like I, my why is so crystal clear now. It's about, you know, being an entrepreneur for entrepreneurs and showing that anything's possible. And, you know, the collective is my mechanism for kind of spreading the message, but also telling the story about what's going on behind the scenes. And, scenes. and it's not easy, you know, it's, it's freaking hard. It's an expensive project. And, and I own it 100% still, you know, yeah. and so, um, yeah, there's been all sorts of business learnings around that. And yeah. so, so one, you know, the sense of purpose, the big vision, laying it all on the line. I mean, you mm. know, as you say, it's, it, you've put a lot into it financially as well as yes. emotionally, spiritually, everything. Yeah. So it's that taking that risk. Yeah. And that to, I mean, at the core of courage is just absolutely laying it on the line yeah and we do it in different we're called to do it in different ways totally and i mean i laugh now because i actually had to divorce my accountant for um for four months last year because he just kept looking at he was at peter we see for like 20 odd years and he's now gone out on his own and he just kept looking at my very red bottom line saying you cannot keep running a business like this and i was like and when you sit with your accountant and say it's okay greg i just know it's all gonna work <laughs> he just they don't understand but for me, it's, you know, it, at that point it was just, I just had to go on gut. I had to keep my head down and yep. just keep going and believing that because I was so passionate and because I, I was so on purpose that it would just all happen. And we got through that. Greg and I are now unified again. <laughs> okay, good. I'm glad you've divorced. <laughs> but sometimes, you know, in that time, there would be few people who would understand the level. He said in 22 years or whatever at PwC, he's never seen anyone take the level of risk yes. that I've taken. And so I had to make a conscious decision to say, well, I can't, I can't be around this at the moment, which is the weirdest thing and I don't recommend it. But having had 13 years in business now, there's, you know, I, I can afford myself to push it a little bit further because yes. I've pushed and pushed and pushed it over 13 years and I kind of know how far I can push it now. And yeah, yeah so... Anyway. And I think, you know, what comes up for me listening to you just personally is, you know, there's different ways of taking risk. You know, mm. for me, it's like getting out of my comfort zone. People might, not, you know, not like me. They mm. might not like my book. They mm. might not like what I have to say on a stage. You mm. know, I might fail. Yeah, I you're mean, putting yourself out there all the time. Yeah, well. all the time. Um, but, you know, financially, obviously, that's a whole other area of risk as well. Yeah. And, and I, I've got to, you know, I've got to hand it to you. So a minute ago, you talked about having to divorce your accountant for a while there because yes. you couldn't cope with the risk. <laughs> I know you've also been married and divorced. So tell me how, how, tell me about that journey, that experience, how you've come out of it more whole, more wise, more happy. And mm. uh, I know you're in another relationship now, which is great. Yes. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of women who, um, who find themselves in marriages and they're miserable and mm. they stay in them a long time. Mm. You know, how did you find your courage and what did you learn? I learned a lot because, I mean, that was 10, gosh, nearly 10 years ago that um, I divorced. And um, how, long, how long were you married? Like we were together about three years. Yeah. But the thing is, um, you know, it was perfect, really, in terms of, I mean, it was hideous, but at the same time, perfect, if that <laughs> perfect makes sense. Perfect hideous, yeah. Because, with, because until that point, I really had no semblance of who I was at all. Like, I was living life according to... Why other. did you get married? Um, oh, oh, God. Well, I mean, we got engaged in, like, <laughs> within 10 days of meeting. Like, it was, I was crazy and spontaneous, and I was drinking, and I was wild, and I was just <laughs> loose, you know? <laughs> It isn't actually that hard to imagine you being crazy, spontaneous and wild. I'm still like that. I just don't drink anymore, which is really good. But, um, and I just, you know, everything was just, I don't know, it was just out there. You know, everything was big and out there. And I still live like that, but in a much more conscious way. And so, and so, you know, we got married and it was crazy and it was fun, but we had nothing in common. And, you know, and I was still drinking. And we really had nothing in common. He arrived with an esky, he left with an esky, and it was all fine. But... I mean, it wasn't fine. It was tough. You know, it was horrible. And, um, you know, I... You liked to party. He was fun. Yeah, but I. But it was then that it was really the turning point in my life, you know, because 
I kind of thought, I went on a really downward spiral after that and thought, what the hell am I doing with my life? You know, like I'm kind of drinking myself into oblivion. I'm, you know, it's just, it was, it was shallow and it was nothing and I didn't know who I was. And so I, that was the journey for me 10 years ago of starting to really immerse myself in a lot of, um, you know, spiritual courses and personal development all over the world from, you know, the middle of a jungle in a raw food vegan commune in the middle of Costa Rica to like I've all sorts of trekking across the Western Ghats in India to going and sitting in a path of love for seven days in the Hunter Valley, like crawling through sweat lodges, like you name it, I've pretty much done it now. And so I'm pretty well processed. But, um, and it was great because I just, I got a semblance of who I was, you know, and and so hated it, horrible, almost didn't make it through in a way, like I was pretty suicidal and all sorts of things and depressed and you name it. And um, and so it's funny, like so many people say to me now, oh, you're always so happy and fun and funny. And I'm like, I made a freaking conscious decision, you know, back then that if I was going to live, which I chose, then I'm going to freaking live a great life. Yeah. So it's not by accident, you know. Yeah. So if people look at me and go, wow, you're so successful, you've got all this, it's been a bloody big journey. Yeah. Well, and I think that's the thing, people, there's no quick fix or pill, you know, you've got to put in the work. Yeah, and you know, you can't have the breakthrough without the breakdown. Yeah, you know, you've got I, mean, to hit, I had to hit rock bottom, you know. Yeah. It's not a fun place to be, I don't want to go back there again. Yeah. But, um, you know, now I have the tools and do the work to kind of keep myself away what? from there. If you, if you met, and I'm, I'm sure occasionally you do run into people who find themselves in a place where they feel totally lost, they're Ooh. in self-destruction mode, whether it's yeah. drinking or eating or yes. whatever it is, yeah. and they just don't know where they're going and they're, they're really falling into despair. What yes. in the hell is my life about? Yeah. Do I even want to live it? Yes. What do you say to them? Look, I think everyone's journey is different, you know, and I think people have to find their own way and you can't tell anyone because the thing is for me, you know, if anyone had have told me give up drinking, I would have thrown a drink in their face, probably, like probably, really. And, you know, you have to find What's the shifting? courage yourself. Oh, just complete rock bottom, you know. It, it was really to the point of, um, you know, it just wasn't pretty and I just, I just made a conscious decision to yeah. empower forward and I got the help, you know, that I needed. And yeah. um, and I've seen it time and time again and it's unfortunate. As much as you want to, or we, I, want to jump in and help people, people have to help themselves. Yeah. That is the only way. And it's not until they're ready and it's yeah. just how far do they have to go down before they hit that point of, yeah. I've got to like turn my life around. Um, yeah, Hardly. look, it's such a big conversation and yeah. I think, you know, society there's so many there are a lot of issues and it's really unfortunate i think a key thing i mean you talked about getting help i remember i had bulimia through my teens and i was in my late probably about 1920 and yeah. i would just it was in this terrible cycle of eating and, and binging yeah. and throwing up and it yeah. was just pervasive like i was just totally caught yeah in it. wow and i remember one time and i was studying for something i, I mean i was at uni i was, fun, I was highly functional but i was People didn't yeah. know. It's a lot of yes. shame around it. Yeah. And I remember just sitting in front of a mirror, just tears in my eyes. I'd just gone and thrown up a packet of mint sliced biscuits that I'd just yeah. finished on. Looking at this mirror with tears in my eyes going, I cannot stand the rest of my life mm. knowing that I'm in this cycle. Like it was just yeah. continual. Yeah. And it was just, I remember being so clear at that moment, I've got to get help because I keep trying to break it and I can't. Yeah. I think and it was a real moment of like despair at the future being more of the same yeah and absolute humility yeah like, i just cannot solve this with the tools that i've got i need something else to help me yeah turn this sinking ship around yeah and i, I don't know something as that place of absolute humility and yeah. despair at the future being more of the same yeah 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 it's like all right i've got and for me i went and got help and yeah. started a long journey of recovery but yeah yeah you know yeah wow whichever it is for you going off to you know all the things that you did you know yeah. it'd be nice to just turn it around like that but yeah it's a journey it is a journey thanks for sharing that yeah I think it's um yeah it's definitely a journey and I think it's just having the 
courage and also the um, realization that sometimes we are, you know, there is a certain powerlessness about trying to do it on our own and that it's, um, it's okay to get help, you know, and surround ourselves. And I think that feeling of living with, um, you know, guilt, fear, shame, remorse, which I lived with for years, and then, um, you know, and then realizing that there are other people in that boat and that yeah. there are tools that can help yeah. us to turn that around. And I think that's a really brave thing to do, you know, and it's, I mean, it's very easy for me to sit here and talk about it now, 10 years on, yeah, because it. it's like, it's so not a part of my life. It's a, it's um, a part of my story, but it doesn't define me. And I'm very comfortable, I'm very comfortable with who yeah. I am now, so I can talk about it. It's, and you know, it's harder for people when they're in it, I think, to have that courage and to, to be able to see beyond the current situation. Yeah, I, you, absolutely. Yeah. Which, which brings me on to, you know, you said it's part of my, it's part of my story, yes. but it doesn't define me. Yeah. Over your, you know, over the years, being an entrepreneur, not everything goes your way, which no. I think <laughs> they've failed. Um, yeah. We all do. Mm. You know, when you found yourself, um, and even now, I mean, every I'm day. I'm still finding myself, but yes. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. When, yes, when you find yourself, <laughs> I was going to say, when you find yourself having one of those days oh. <laughs> where you don't roll out of bed and go, oh my God, the world is fantastic, but you're yeah. kind of like, uh, you know, I'm feeling average or something happens. It just doesn't fall to plan. People let you down or whatever. Yeah, yeah. How do you... Pick yourself up, get back, you know, on centered, on purpose again. What do you What do you do for yourself to help you do that? Yeah, it, it's really interesting. Um, God, it's going to sound woo woo again, but I, I am a bit woo woo better. <laughs> but I really respond to people's energies. I realised, like, I was actually at a dinner last night, and there was just some people there who just were very shallow. And I just, I actually left after entree because I just thought. I don't need to stay here, you know, because I, I respond a lot to that. So, um, and so, you know, I don't just surround myself with yes people because I think that's also dangerous. But I definitely surround myself with people who are positive and, yeah. you know, who who have this, who have similar kind of mindsets and all that kind of thing. But yeah, this there are some days, you know, you wake up and think, um, you know, it's tough. Uh, I'm really weird though because I think there's always a choice at every I am weird. I think there's a choice at every turn. I was trying to think of an actual example. So um, you know, sometimes with the financial situation at the moment, it's tough, you know. And so I do a flip and I almost play a game with myself in my head and I'm like, I can't wait to get up and see what's in the bank account today. You know, like it, that, what that, it works. that excites me now as opposed to thinking, shivers, I wonder if anyone's paid us. I just, so then that becomes, I almost feel like it's Christmas. Woohoo, what's going to be in the bank account? It becomes a little game. So I think it's like you've got to be able to find whatever works for you to yeah. turn things around, you know. Um, I could... It would be very easy, easy for me at the moment to be living in perpetual fear Anxiety. and paralyzed and anxious thinking about the magnitude of what I've taken on. But in actual fact, I very rarely, if ever, feel fear anymore. Not because it's not there, like it's very there, but I choose the other way kind of to go, well, let's just have a game with this or let's just like work out how to do that. Or now I surround myself with, you know, accountants, lawyers, an amazing team of people that I can quickly say, this is a situation, you know, and I've got a team of yeah. help. So I'm not carrying it all myself. So because otherwise everything keeps you small, you yeah. know, the fear keeps you small. So it's just finding the tools and the people to surround yourself with to like be able to play a big game. So I can't afford to feel it at the moment, really. No, I, I get it. Yeah. I mean, and, and, and I mean, obviously, courage isn't the absence of fear. It is just acknowledging that mm. it's there, but it is not running my life, mm. and I'm not going to give it power. Yeah. And Otherwise, you couldn't. I, I could not physically do what I'm doing every day yeah. if I felt that. I would yeah. just. I'd be. <laughs> I wouldn't be getting out of bed. I'd be in a little facial position, going, "I don't want to do it." So, so I, I don't go there. So you know, you talked about um, you know being with people who are positive. Yes. How have you dealt with over the years? As we all do, sometimes they're relationships we've just had for a long time, our kind of habit friends, mm. you know, we've just known them a long time, so we just see them. Mm. And how do you deal with those relationships with people when, you know, you realise that relationship is no longer serving you? Yeah, exit them. I, I mean, I do. I, I, I exit a lot of relationships, actually. Um, because there are, you know, different times in your life, like when I stopped drinking, I mean, I just had a whole lot of, like, fun people, but fun if you want to table dance every yeah. night. But, you know, no real, 
intellectual or spiritual stimulation or anything. Yeah. And so I completely exited, which is hard. You know, they're people I've been hanging out with for 10 years and partying with or whatever, and um, probably longer. And I just just exited them all. Like it wasn't a healthy environment for me. you say you me. exited them, because sometimes people go, people, what do I do? What if they call me up? Do I say, I don't like you when I'm, I've moved on to another plane? You know, what, what if you just um, not return calls? It's different now. I mean, then I... I probably just didn't return call. You know, like I didn't have, I didn't really know how, I didn't have the ability to communicate properly, probably. But now um, it depends on the situation, but I'd probably be much more honest about it and say, I actually feel like this isn't really working for me at the moment. You know, and I'd explain yeah. why and actually communicate that and be quite honest and authentic yeah. about it. Um, and you know that's that's up to them to take that how they want, or I don't know, or you can slowly peter things out, you know, yeah. and just not quite catch up with I people know. so much. I know. But I think it's a really, you know, there's lots of ways to do it. There's a whole yeah. other book. Oh, yeah. But um, but I think it's really, really, really important, particularly when you are growing. Well, when I am growing and moving at a pace, you know. Um, you got to have people around you who are prepared yeah. to grow and move at the same pace. Giants and things like walk with giants, like yeah. walk with people who are into, who are having bigger conversations, who yeah. make you bigger. Yes. Like who yeah. challenge small thinking. Or if you're talking small, they don't they don't want to engage in it. Like yeah. if you're having a small day, you know they're exactly. not up to small conversation. They don't want to gossip. They yeah. don't want to. They don't want to talk. They just want to like, what are we up to? Exactly. And, and there and it's hard because there are a few people that I really think are beautiful. Um, you know, really kind people that I th have thought, oh, they'll always be there. And lately I've just noticed, I don't know if they really kind of are anymore. And I don't know, you just got to, yeah. you know, you just got to make that decision as you move through and yeah. So when it comes to, you're, you've got a lot on your plate. Hmm. So from a perspective of um, you're a woman, you're an entrepreneur, you actually, you know, you're a leader. Uh, there's a lot of people who want your time. There's a lot of things you could commit your time to. And mm. lots of good things and lots yes. of good people. Yes. How do you really um, manage your time in a way that allows you to feel like it? When you look at the day, go, you know what? That was, I, I managed it really effectively. It's not mm. just being busy, 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 mm. busy. Mm. But what I was able to accomplish with how I managed my time and yeah. who I spent it with, what I said yes to, what I said no to. Yeah. Which is becoming increasingly difficult, and um, we I now know because we look at it. I get six to eight hundred emails every single day now. I am still <laughs> responding to most of them okay. ridiculously. I think there's a problem there. Yeah, but I'm doing it. We have this conversation a lot. It is the, a major problem because it's being reactionary all the time, as opposed to. But the reason I'm doing a lot of that is there's so many kind of loyal fans and readers and people. And I'm kind of like, it's only because of them that the collective yeah. is growing and everything. So at the moment, and it's not going to be able to happen for very much yeah, longer at all, yeah. I feel like it's my obligation and my duty to really engage with them and thank them and nurture them because they're the people who are spreading yeah. the word. Yeah. And without them, it wouldn't be happening. So, you know, but, but I, for that very same reason, I find it very difficult. You know, you'd be the same because... I do so many speaking gigs and things and you go along and because I genuinely love people, you know, and I genuinely love hearing what they're doing. So you come off stage, whatever, you have a conversation and then they think they, you know, you're the best friend. And so then they say, let's go and have a coffee. And it's like, that's just unrealistic yeah. these yeah. days. For me, it comes down to value exchange, really. So, um, and that can mean a whole lot of things. That can be a monetary thing. That could be someone paying me for my time. Or it could be that, you know, um, there's, you know, a spirit exchange or there's all sorts of different exchanges in life I think you know and as long as someone's prepared to meet me and by that I mean feel like they're my equal and can have a conversation at the same level mm -hmm. and um and not feel like you know it's the guru thing and they're just yeah. sucking your energy yeah. and it's a one way um what does Matt Church say uh, uh, uh friend tour yeah or whatever okay <laughs> all right <laughs> yes I love Matt I, yeah it's true um so as long as there's some kind of value exchange, yeah. and it's not one of those ones that we all have, which is, um, I hear you the guru of, can I pick your brains over yeah. a coffee? And I'm like, well, that just doesn't yeah, work no, for me. I get it. I get yeah. it totally. So it's just, um, and I think it's a really important message for everyone, just to value your time. You know, yeah. put, a, put a price, whether that be monetary or otherwise, yeah. on your time. And I think, and, and I've written about this a lot, but 
having the courage to say no. Yes. Because I think as women, yes. we love to take care of people. Yes. We want to be nice. Yeah, yeah, we want totally. to be liked. We want to, you know, make everyone feel really taken care of. Yes. And it can be really hard not to be able to give your time to someone who you know would really like it. Yeah, yeah. Or to, to sign up and be part of something that someone really wants you to be part of. So Of course. But, it, but it's also about leverage. And I think that's, that's the reason you write books and you speak. And I write books and I speak and have the magazine. And, you know, there's... It's about um, you know creating momentum and scale so that people can have yeah, that message. So you can reach more people, and you don't have these yeah. one-on-ones all the which, time. Which comes back to just what are my core, pro- like what's the mm. big vision? Mm. What am I about? What is most important? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah. how do we reach as many people as possible? And of course, I would love to mentor hundreds of people and yeah. have, but it's just yeah, not realistic anymore. And it's not because I'm a mean person and I'm trying to like, but it's just the yeah. reality. No. So, yeah. So just in finishing up, yes. I would just love to, you know, you've been really brave. You've also been really vulnerable. You've, yes. also, you've had your good times and you've had your not good times. Yes. As you look to the future and you yeah. think about, you know, Lisa, what, who am I? What am I about? What's the big vision? You know, what does courage look like for you on a daily basis? In terms of my big vision? Yep. Um, look, I think for me, it's pretty obvious. It's, it's twofold. It's one, the collective being a brand, you know, to take to the world and, and show others that it's, you know, inspirational and aspirational and kind of digging behind the story, behind the story and making that as big as possible. And then for me personally, it's very much about continuing to be an entrepreneur for entrepreneurs and living my life out loud, um, which is, you know, that's a courageous thing to do because you're constantly putting yourself you know, in front of people and telling the really raw, courageous stuff because I know that helps other people. It, for years, the media kept saying to me, oh, wow, you've got this, and they ask you the glossy questions, and I sit there and go, yeah, it's all great, and I've written all these books, yeah. and it doesn't help anyone, you know? It's the stuff about how I got there and what I went through, and that's the courageous conversation to have, and that's the conversation I'll continue to have so that it actually inspires others to, you yeah. know, know that they can be weird as well. <laughs> totally. And I, I mean, you are so authentic. But I think, you know, I mean, the reason I called it Raw Courage TV is like, let's just cut all of the gloss mm. and all, mm. uh, you know, just cut to the heart of yeah. the real vulnerability of it all at yeah. times yes. and, um, and, and, and really live from that place, yeah. which isn't always easy. It's easy to get pulled away and have our ego and all that get in the way. But, yes. um, but clearly you're doing it. So, Lisa, thank you for sitting down with me. I thank really you. appreciate your time. <laughs> thank you very much.